Hey everybody, my name is Max. Uh, I am a HubSpot trainer at... All right, let's try that one more time. My name is Max. I am a product trainer at HubSpot on the learning and development team. Um, I wanted to make a video today to kind of follow up on my life cycle stages video and talk a little bit about deal stages because oftentimes I see people confuse these two things and they are very, very different. Um, so let's go ahead and just kind of review life cycle stages for a second, right? So if you think of life cycle stages, life cycle stages are subscriber, lead, marketing qualified lead, sales qualified lead, opportunity, customer, evangelist, and other, okay? We need to focus in on the one for opportunity, okay? If you remember from the last video, an opportunity is the stage that a contact moves to when you open up a deal and associate that deal with a contact, okay? Opportunity is signifying that this person is in the sales process because a deal is opened for them. Okay, so if we focus in on where that deal gets created, which is that little opportunity life cycle stage, okay, we look at that little deal and then we blow it up and look a little bit closer at it, you see your sales process, okay? The sales process is pretty much anything in between when you book that first call with the prospect all the way to when they actually go and buy your product and you close the deal and you recognize that revenue, okay? The deal stages, which are a deal property on a deal record are basically the different milestones in your sales process. It's not every single little micro step of your sales process, like phone call number one, phone call number two, phone call number three, phone call number four. No, it is the basic milestones throughout your sales process. Okay. So what I'd highly recommend doing is thinking of all the big phases of your sales process and making those your deal stages. Don't make too many deal stages. I can't stress this enough because your data will become super messy. It will become very hard to report, very hard to understand if you're doing a pipeline review with one of your with one of your sales reps or with your manager. I'm going to give you just one example here to give you a little bit of inspiration on what I mean by phases versus like individual specific parts of the sales process, okay? Before I worked at Hubs Spot. I worked at Apple as a business specialist. I was a salesperson before I came to HubSpot, okay? Inside of Apple's CRM system, they had kind of the equivalent of what we would think of as HubSpot's deals, uh, but they were called opportunities, very similar to what you see inside of Salesforce, okay? Um, but they had these different stages. And, you know, it's a very Apple thing to do, but they basically had this acronym that they used for each one of their phases of the sales process. That acronym was APPLE, A-P-P-L-E. Now, A-P-P-L-E standed for Approach, Probe, Present, Listen and Resolve, and then Establish Ownership, okay? So I'll tell you kind of what those phases mean, and then maybe you can start to think of like your own general phases to make this a little bit easier for your deal stages in HubSpot, okay? Approach meant that we knew that there was some sort of an inkling that this person wanted to buy. Maybe they reached out to us. Maybe we scheduled a meeting. Maybe they stopped by the store. We knew that there was some sort of opportunity there. And we built this deal in anticipation, knowing that we were going to start that conversation and hopefully sell something to them, right? Probe was when we kind of got into the phase where we started to understand what they needed a little bit more, right? We maybe had that first discussion and we were in that information gathering phase. So you can almost think of this as like post discovery call leading up to some sort of like demo or some sort of, um, you know, uh, uh, other sort of like scope out of like what your product is or, or services, something like that, right? But probe is like where we've, we've gotten past that point where it's like, yeah, it's very clear they want to buy something, but we're really trying to understand and figure out what the right solution is for them. Present is when we actually put together a solution for them and sent them a quote. We were presenting them the solution. So at that point, we knew we had built a quote, we had sent it over to the uh, the prospect or the customer, and they had it in their hands, okay? We we're in that general phase somewhere, okay? It wasn't anything crazy like building quote, quote complete, quote sent, waiting on customer. It wasn't that specific. It was just a phase saying, okay, we built a quote and we presented it to them. Very simple. 
The step after that was called listen and resolve. This is where we're kind of in the negotiating phase, making sure we're ironing out any of the kind of final details before they eventually give us either the yes, the verbal yes, or they actually like set us a purchase order. Establish ownership was Apple's way of saying, <laughs> we've established their ownership. They bought it. We closed the deal, right? Now, I'm not saying you have to use this exact one. I'm just saying like this was something they taught us at Apple that I thought was, you know, honestly, like, kind of funny because it's a, it's an acronym that's literally in the name of the company, but also kind of like a brilliant way of looking at the sales process because it was a very, very simple phases. It was not overcomplicated. It was very easy to report on. Um, and, you know, the thing is, is like the sales process gets messy. It's not always perfect. There's always going to be customers that want to have one call with you and they'll buy. There's other customers that will want to have five or ten calls with you that you want to buy. You'll have, you know, one sales cycle that lasts a day, one sales cycle that maybe lasts a year. It all depends on what you sell, right? Sales can be messy. So, so you don't want to like overthink it and over engineer your deal stages to the point where it just, you know, if everything doesn't go perfectly, it's hard to use. So I would start to think about using general phases. Another good way of looking at it is thinking of the big milestones in your sales process and naming each of your phases, whatever is the waiting time in between those milestones not necessarily like the moment you hit your hit that milestone because then you're moving something to a deal stage and then moving it to the next one right after and then you don't use it and it's messy and that, 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 okay um so that's some of the best advice that i can give on deal stages the only other thing that i would like just kind of recommend just because it's you know we're talking about deals and i'm here and i may as well do it i see a lot of people thinking they're slick using workflows to automatically create a deal when a customer fills out some sort of form that first gets them in touch with sales. Okay. A lot of people think this is a super smart thing to do because they're like, Hey, we're using automation and we're automatically creating a deal and we're assigning it to a sales rep and they didn't have to do anything. And we saved, you know, two or three clicks and now they have this deal open in front of them and they can go attack it. Right. Um, I would highly recommend not doing that. Here's why. If you let your customers decide when deals get opened up in your CRM system, you are going to start to have a lot of messy data in there. And if you're paying attention to the close loss rate of your deals for your sales reps, naturally over time, what you're going to see is that close loss ratio is going to plummet because you have a whole bunch of deals that never should have been opened in the first place. And you're letting customers basically dictate when deals get opened up in your system. There are going to be plenty of customers that raise their hand saying they want to talk to sales, saying they want to get that demo, saying they want that free consultation, free trial, whatever it is, they're going to fill that form out and they're never going to talk to you. All right. They're going to ignore all your calls. They're going to regret their decision. They're going to, uh, could have been that they pulled the trigger too quickly. Right. And they're never going to talk to anyone, or at least not now. That's not your sales rep's fault. Okay, you were setting them up for failure by just opening a deal willy nilly based on a workflow. I would highly recommend that the opening of a deal, a decision that a sales rep makes when they think there is some sort of percentage chance that they could actually close business with someone. So a kind of like a good rule of thumb there is I would probably open up a deal after you scheduled your first meeting, your first call, whatever it is, right? At least then the customer requests to speak with someone, you contact them, they say, yes, I'm happy to speak with you, let's talk at this time. Then you know at least they're somewhat serious. Versus just that deal just getting opened out of nowhere and then the sales rep looking like, why did this deal get opened in the first place? This person never talked to me. They never got back to me. It's not really fair to them. Don't do that. Okay. Let them make the choice to open up a deal. All right. So I'm going to leave you with that. I hope that's helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and throw some you know questions in the comments below. Um, and if you want to like learn more on like my theory around deal stages, I'm more than happy to help. Talk to you later.